Hello everybody, Cosmic Zen here. I'd like to talk to you all about changing people's minds. Now many of us have found ourselves in positions where we're talking to theists and trying to change their mind by presenting them with evidence and rational thinking as opposed to the acceptance of dogmatic thought. Now there's some key elements I think that are important that you have to consider when you're going to try to change somebody's mind. One thing is, is that they have to want to change. You have to inspire the need for truth in a person. You have to get them to understand that there's more out there than what they know. Obviously, if they knew what you knew, they wouldn't be believing in the fairy tale. But as most of you know, you can argue and argue and argue with them till you're blue in the face for days and days until you part ways or become friends or whatever else. But if you really want to change their mind, you're going to have to inspire them to seek the truth for themselves. To constantly tell them not to believe you, not to believe experts, but to go study for themselves. Let them find their own experts. If you can inspire the desire for them to take it upon themselves to look up answers beyond what they know, make them realize, nicely, preferably, and more effectively, that if they learn some things, that they're not some kind of know-it-all, that there's a lot of information out there for them to know. It's also good to point out intellectual honesty. If they can't admit that we weren't there to watch God create the universe so that there's no way they can really know this, you have to handhold them to a level of honesty to even realize that they don't know these claims that they claim they know. Even if they're right, there's no way they can know these things and until they can come to a point of intellectual honesty to admit that no, none of us were there to see it happen, then you're never going to budge them and you're never going to inspire them to seek out more information. Now when you have these conversations or debates with theists, I have found that they come from two directions. The first one is that maybe they are sympathetic, empathetic, and they generally want to save you from hell, like maybe a friend or a relative when you tell them you're an atheist. The second path that they will take and this is the much larger path, is that they just want to be right. They want to display their theology flag and how much they know about their religion in the Bible, which usually isn't very much. Most Christians have not read the Bible. They've only read parts of Genesis, parts of the Gospels, maybe parts of Revelations. They haven't read the entire thing. And they just want to be right. So they'll pick the bits and pieces of the parts, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, the parroting of religion that they all have and they want you to agree with them or see it their way to justify their own belief in their own head. And when you're having these discussions, at least I have found, one thing that keeps coming up is they'll say something to the effect of science is always proving itself wrong. Or science is always wrong. You can't believe in science because next week you're going to believe something else. So I would like you to remember that this is the beauty of science. When you have a dogmatic thought, it doesn't change. And every time you evolve your thought in the dogma, like say they learn something about science and they do have to fit it into their religion, they'll change it, change it, change it, and it becomes another denomination, denomination, denomination. You need to nip that in the bud and make them understand that this is the beauty of science. That we are on a quest for knowledge and we do find out things and when science is proven wrong, that just elevates our intelligence even more. That it's a good thing when we find something wrong because it means it has advanced our intelligence. It's a system of constantly improving. It's a system of saying, I don't know, we don't know, here's what we do know or think we know, and we're going to build on it and build on it and build on it. I think it's also important that when they say something like this against science, it's a good time to call them on it. Ask them what they know about science. Ask them what they know about relativity, special relativity and general relativity. Ask them what they know about physics and Newton's laws and Einstein's theories. Ask them if they know what a light year is or a subatomic particle. Call them out on it. If anything, you're going to inspire them to learn and look up things themselves. Take it away from evolution because they're going to not believe evolution until they have an understanding of the physical world, a little bit of physics and reality. They're going to have to understand there are a lot of things they don't know. When they're inspired with a desire to start learning things, then they'll start learning about the evolution and the long time periods of the earth and the universe. Talk to them about the properties of matter and energy because they don't know about energy. As far as they know, spiritual matter and energy is part of the physical universe. And when they talk about random chance or that this all came from nothing, 
Start talking to them about statistics and probability. See what they say when you lay that on them. If they want to talk about chance and random and whatever else, hey, that's cool because we have ways to measure that as well. So just try to keep your cool, call them out on the science. Ultimately, it comes down to instilling in them the desire to look things up for themselves. If you can't get them to look things up for themselves, you're never going to get anywhere, so you're wasting your time even arguing with them. Inspire education. Inspire the desire to seek out education on a personal level. That's the only way to turn a dogmatic mind into a free thinker. A world of free thinkers. What a beautiful thing. Peace.